you have to okay um so i will speak to you about the right to life and the legal status of a human embryo um we know that the right to life is one of the primordial social value and life is a superior form of existence so uh, the right to life holds a dominant position concerning other subjective rights or in the absence of an adequate protection of this right they ever lose their validity so as a result the importance of the right to life and the need to regulate in, in all absolutely all legal texts is indisputable but none of the international documents give a definition of this right which makes it absolutely difficult to establish the limits and the content of the right Another issue that gives uh, rise to a multitude of controversies is the lack of a concise definition in the term person or human being, thus preventing the exact establishment of, uh, of the exact the, the individuals who benefit from the, this fundamental right. Modern science theories indicate as the first frontier of life a moment of fertilization of the egg by the sperm, more precisely, the moment when fertilization ends and the embryonic development begins, which begins with the preparation of the first cell division. Some authors uh, move the beginning of life to the formation of specific structures or the beginning of specific processes. Okay, stay on this, um, on this slide. No, no need to go any further. Returning to defining the first frontier of life, thus when life begins um it's uh, it's an important moment because it's a condition for acquiring the, the status of a person and uh, we have to mention that nor the embryo nor the fetus uh, is not granted the status of an individual as is not separate from the mother's body and is not capable of self-determination thus it cannot be considered a persons and regarding regarding the legal status of the human embryo. Uh, since the birth of the first child conceived through in vitro fertilization techniques, the question of the moral and legal status of the zygote and the embryo um, has become particularly controversial. According to the medical dictionary, the embryo is defined as an organism in the early stages of development from conception to the end of eight weeks. So until the 70s, there was no real debate about the status of or definition of a human embryo. As a result, when separating the embryo from, the, from its mother, um, it became a subject of particular legislative issues. And uh, after the criminalization of abortion and stem cell research intensified all these contradictory, contradictory debates. In a similar view of the basic criteria that defines a person, is with its ability to assess their own existence and uh, the moral the difference between a person and a human being is a value they can attribute to their own life. As a result, referring to all those arguments, pre-embryos, embryos or fetuses and even newborns are not human beings, which is why these definitions are highly incompatible with uh, the moral of our society. Regarding the moral status of a human embryo, um, in the early stage of its embryological development is still oppressing issues in the field of bioethics due to reproductive techniques, as well as some form of contraception that prevents embryo implantation. As a result, if human embryos have a moral status of human beings, then they have a full range of human rights, including the right not to be killed in medical experiments and the right not to be sacrificed in, by the reproductive acts of ours. So, Moral status is an important basic concept in the field of bio bioethics and its attribution to certain entity results in major consequence and consequences to the, on the treatment applied to it. The moral status of the embryo inevitably interwines with the need to establish the beginning of life. At the what point in development in the development it appears with a serious right to live, right to life. And if the mere potential to become a person is sufficient for, for, for being a beneficiary of this right. 
From another perspective, if a mere potentiality confers to the fetus and disputable right to life, we could assume that the only reason why it would be possible to terminate a pregnancy would be the risk to the mother's life or health or the presence of an incurable defect that would be depriving the future born from the prospect of becoming a person. Under these conditions, we could assume that the contraceptive method as the morning after pill would have the effect of a murder. From a legal and a historical point of view, the right to property uh, presupposes the existence of the right of disposal and, and the right of destruction. And refer referring to human biological products, usually, um, it is recognized to the donors of sexual gametes the right to prohibit the use or suspend cryopreservation of the embryos that resulted from sampling their genetic material. This right to dispose uh, of the resulting embryo is possible due to the fact that normative acts do not give the embryo a specific status, but rather focus on the individual's rights to reproduce and decide on maternity or paternity issues. As a result, when those who contributed to the in vitro creation of human embryos are undecided about their fate, the right not to become parents usually prevails over claims to become parents. Although it is preferable to have a special, special status, in reality, the law does not kind of distinguish too much the capacity of human embryos to reproduce, and it's quite possible that the law avoids classifying the embryo as just a group of cells without a special moral status for fear of acute controversy. However, when there is a when there is a, a, a case that needs to be solved by some Kurds, some European Kurds, um, these unused embryos um, and the clauses that uh, govern their disposition, they are treated as property. Um, in my conclusion, um, I, I will have to say that my personally, personally my, my um, conclusion is based um, on and from analyzing an imaginary uh, experiment. And uh, I will tell you about it. Supposing a fire breaks out in the laboratory of a fertilization clinic, uh, and in one corner of uh, the laboratory, there is a vessel with 10 embryos, saying age 10 days. And the, in the opposite corner of the laboratory is, uh, is this six-month-old son of a laboratory assistant. The, fire, fire, the firefighter who enters the laboratory realizes that can only save the embryos or the newborn. To the question of who should be saved, the answer seems beyond any reasonable doubt. In every conceivable circumstance, the child is the one who must be saved, any other solution being a serious moral error. The answer would be considered wrong if the embryo enjoyed a similar legal status. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, interesting presentation on a topic which is very discussed in the nowadays. And uh, if there are yes, some questions. Uh, maybe one uh, question. What is your opinion about um, uh, change? The perspectives on the embryo uh, should be very important to uh, explain more from a scientific point of view because uh, some people start considering maybe uh, this um, idea to use embryo um, as uh, non very correct uh, um, ideas because uh, they don't know too much about this. In my personal opinion, every every research in the this this specific loss um, field uh, should have a base of at the base of uh, some science articles and science studies. Um, usually, we form we people tend to form our opinion based on what we hear and what is presented to us. 
which mostly is not a correct answer. Um, but at the base, I think at the base of every law and every court decision should always stay a scientific approach and a scientific studies. Thank you.